director of an opposition newspaper and two of his colleagues are being questioned over accusations they made up reports about recent protests and unrest in the country. Now they deny the charges and say they're being subjected to a smear campaign. The Bahrain Center for Human Rights says more than 400 people have been jailed or have gone missing since the government imposed a state of national safety. Well, a CNN crew recently went to Bahrain for a story about Middle East bloggers, activists, and revolutions. But most of the sources who had agreed to talk couldn't be found. As Amber Lyon explains, she and her crew were also detained. Flying into Bahrain, our plane was largely empty. You definitely know you're heading into an area of unrest when you are one of the only people on the plane uh, headed to that country. On the streets, we discovered an eerie silence. Almost no tourists in the hotels. A strict curfew and military checkpoints. No signs of protests, but we were to find out that the unrest here has not ended. It's just been silenced. We've come across a lot of military checkpoints just driving around here, and you see the guys standing there with their guns, and they're all wearing masks covering their face. We'd arranged a series of interviews, but most of the sources who had agreed to talk to us disappeared. Family members or others close to them say they had been arrested or gone into hiding after massed machine gun-toting security forces raided their homes and threatened them. The Bahrain Center for Human Rights says more than 460 people have been detained in recent weeks. Nurses who treated wounded protesters, doctors, bloggers, a poet. Nabil Rajab of the Bahrain Center for Human Rights says that there's fear these people are being tortured. There are people who were hanged for a month and they were electrocuted and sexually harassed and assaulted. And this is the way they are treated inside Bahraini prisons. We tried to investigate these arrests ourselves, but our second day in Bahrain, helicopters hovered overhead as we stood in the street outside Nabil Rajab's home. Suddenly, half a dozen military and police vehicles surrounded us. About 20 men in black ski masks, some wearing civilian clothing, pointed machine guns at us. They forced us to get on the ground at gunpoint. They erased all the video they found. Then we were taken to a police station and interrogated for nearly six hours before being released. Bahrain's foreign minister couldn't tell us why we were arrested. To scare somebody not to say anything or to scare someone not to express his views. This is not a government policy. We asked him about the missing. There were many who I know personally who have been uh, called in for questioning and uh, arrested, but for a short period of time it was for questioning. But I didn't hear that any one of them being harmed in any way just for blogging or being uh, active online. From this point on, government minders were attached to our team at all times. They would not allow us to film any of the tanks or military. Are you filming? What's that? No, there's a, a tanker down there. Don't. Oh, no, there's no. a tanker where? Yeah. A tank. Yes. It doesn't want you to film a tank. I don't want them to come to you. And <laughs> how, come on, we have. How can we not shoot this stuff? No. And our minders told us that there were no protests. Can we do the protest, Lieutenant? What protest? There's no protest. Say to still do the protest. Instead. Our minders brought us to see the nice things in Bahrain. They brought us to the shopping mall to look at the fine selection of Bahraini shoes. Meanwhile, while we were being minded, human rights workers told us security forces continued to raid homes late at night, taking the opposition away one by one at gunpoint. Please. As a security, national security. But we were warned by government officials not to press okay. any further, or we would again be arrested. Are those guys following us all day? Oh. The police? They are not following us. And this time, we might not get out. All right, Amber Lyon joins us now from CNN Center with uh, some... Uh, to elaborate on what we've just witnessed. Amber, I'm wondering what your six-hour detention was like and what justification the government gave uh, for, for having such tight control over what you could and could not see. 
Well, to this day, we haven't been given any justification as to our arrest, and they say that right now, due to matters of national security, that's why they're preventing the media from really getting to see the overall picture of what's going on in the country right now. Uh, when we were in uh, detention for those six hours, we, we were treated well, we, we weren't harmed, and we were each taken away one by one individually and questioned. At some points we were asked uh, pretty personal questions about our religion and uh, whether we were married, had families. Um, after that, we were released after those six hours uh, to go back out and start filming. But as you saw in the piece, we were extremely limited in what we were able to shoot. Errol? And of course the issue in Bahrain is there is a, uh, a Shia majority that is ruled by the Sunni minority. Um, I know that you have, uh, were able to put some more uh, content together for us. What will we look forward to tomorrow? Well, tomorrow uh, we're going to show you one of our stories from when we were able to venture into one of these Shia villages, uh, uh, an area that the government didn't want us to see. And, and we found uh, an overall fear among the residents there uh, in, in going to the hospital because the military has taken over one of the biggest hospitals in Bahrain. So, so we found people who are treating themselves, some of them have bullet wounds at home because they'd rather do that then enter one of these hospitals because they fear they're going to be arrested. And another thing to mention too, over the weekend we learned that Nabil Rajab, the human rights activist whose house we were detained outside of, was referred to the military for prosecution. And this referral came after Rajab published pictures on Facebook of a man who died in police custody whose body appeared to show signs of torture. The Bahraini government says the images were fabricated. We've got pictures of the government's photos and Nabil's photos. You're looking at uh, his right now. Those were posted by Nabil and several activists online. Uh, you can see obvious markings of apparent signs of torture. Now that picture you're looking at right now, that came from the Bahraini government. They say that was taken by the medical examiner. They say this man uh, who died over the weekend was not tortured, was rather an unruly prisoner, and guards were trying to detain him, and that's when he passed away. Now, regardless of the veracity of these photos, just nine days ago, I interviewed the foreign minister in Bahrain, Sheikh Khalid, and he told me directly that the citizens of Bahrain have complete freedom of speech online, yet you look at the situation with Rajab, and they are trying to criminally prosecute him for a tweet. It doesn't really add up, Earl. Right, and uh, the government is able to uh, make these claims as they control what CNN tries to cover as uh, Amber Lyon there tries to get Complete as control. To the truth we, we were completely controlled after that. It was very hard to, to yeah. cover what was going on. Thankfully, though, as we said earlier, we were able to get into one of these villages before we were detained, and we'll bring you that story tomorrow. All right, fantastic. Amber, thank you very much.